actually we have uh, what was known two years ago uh, by the Center for Teaching and Learning, but we, uh, we had a major overhaul uh, like almost two years, and we renamed it for Center of Innovative Learning because our president don't don't believe anymore in teaching. He believes in learning <laughs> at this stage. So uh, we called it CIL. Uh, this is the entity that is currently responsible for uh, all sort of pedagogies. And uh, right now, of course, we are, our focus is almost entirely, I would say, online education and technology in education. We started a uh, program uh, last summer part of the CIL, the Center of Innovative Learning. And uh, uh, in this program, we, sp we supported uh, two or three faculty members in converting their courses fully online. And uh, in the fall semester, these courses were offered. Our center is basically one staff. If you want, uh, really from a staff perspective, there's a what we call the deputy director for the center. And actually, he's a computer scientist and not a person in ed education. So he's more on the admin side, more on the technical side that, of things rather than on the education side of things. But uh, the way we operated the structure, and actually me and Rola, both assistant provosts, we kind of oversee the the the, uh, the CIL, uh, the, the core of the uh, CIL is actually what we call the CIL faculty fellows. Uh, this is a, an excellent experience uh, and uh, something we're very, very proud of. So what we did, and this, this started last summer when we revamped uh, the, yeah. the whole CIL thing and we said, okay, we want to build it as uh, faculty centered. It is uh, by the faculty to the faculty. There's uh, just the stuff there is really admin and management. Uh, so uh, although in the future we would we would love to have few instructional designers and uh, maybe uh, uh, technical support, uh, more of technical support, but uh, the core of it will continue to be the faculty fellows. The faculty fellows are is the following. This is the program that we have. Uh, it's actually a uh, program we did last summer. It's a one month uh, training. Uh, the faculty, uh, we actually open to all faculty of LAU to submit a uh, proposal on uh, doing some sort of technological uh, education or pedagogical innovation in any of their courses. So they come to us uh, during, uh, last year we did it during the month of July for four weeks, almost every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we had workshops uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon we discussed how the workshops can be implemented on uh, the uh, uh, on their courses, uh, they worked on the courses during uh, the, uh, some some free days that we gave them, and by the end of the program, they had uh, full training uh, on different aspects of uh, from pedagogy, from educational pedagogical uh, uh, aspects, uh, from multimedia, from uh, 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 technology innovation. Uh, we did virtual reality, we did the online education, we did so many things. So uh, they had full training, and then also they applied their training on their courses. Uh, they continued to apply it throughout the fall semester and they learned more from it and we shared more experience. And then by, by the, when we had COVID, they were fully ready, really. And uh, they were the ones who really did the webinars, they did the support workshops, we did mentorship programs, we did so many things uh, over the spring and up till now. Um, and they are the core. They are really the ones who are taking care of, uh, you know, supporting the faculty. Just to add, Berber, also, the faculty fellows themselves would become mentors, you know, for colleagues, for, for people in their departments, for the university at large, especially now during COVID-19. So the idea is to have this group of people grow over the years, right, and to have an even larger support for the rest of the faculty, which I think also yeah. is very nice. Of the past year, we've just wanted to make sure things go, you know, relatively well and it's complete and the students have their final grades. But now there are different expectations. So one thing we've been, we've been doing right now, we set the kind of um, guidelines for the minimum requirements of what an online course should, uh, should have in order to be an online course. And that's something about that uh, can also talk about. Um, and it came from the CIL and from the faculty fellows. And this was shared with the uh, school deans as well. And the two deans will, of course, share it with the chairpersons. Chairpersons are supposed to look into the courses, but it's in no way a, an easy process or a straightforward process. Uh, this was one of the questions that came up. Who ensures the quality of the online courses? Who's going to be looking at them? These are some of the things we've been discussing and trying to come up with some, some solutions for that. Um, all the 
all the faculty in the university have seen those guidelines. They were shared at large scale uh, with the public so that they are aware that there are minimum requirements. It's not just, you know, converting a course online where you can just go online <laughs> in a synchronous way and, and lecture to students. Our courses in the fall semester is not going to be online. Uh, it's going to be mostly mm -hmm. hybrid, some online and some face-to-face. -face. So uh, what we're planning to do is uh, revamp our classes or modify our classes so that they are all uh, perfectly ready for social distancing. So a distance of one and a half to two meters between each student. Uh, yeah. We're uh, providing uh, kits so that they can sanitize their uh, desks before they get into them. So uh, there's a whole plan going on there with the health committee RULA is working on. So uh, this is one aspect. So once you bring the students at least uh, once a week instead of three times a week, uh, the normal time, uh, we're going to be bringing them once a week to the campus. This way they will get the interaction. They can see their faculty, talk to them. They can, you know. Uh, so this, this, this digital divide will be remedied and uh, the distance will be kind of remedied. Uh, so this is our solution, if you want, uh, in the full semester by bringing them to campus. Some courses will be entirely online, uh, but not all. I think we were uh, lucky to be uh, to have a seed for online education. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, it was like almost just a six months to one year before uh, the COVID-19 that we really started uh, some movement on online education. Without that, I, I think we would be really, really in a big, pro big problem. Mm -hmm. Because by then we, we have tested things. We we know, we have the know-how, we have the fellows ready, uh, we have uh, so many things. We're, we're ready to really push into online education very, very quickly and uh, deliver some sort of quality. So readiness, I would say, is something uh, we were lucky to have, but maybe we need to have more. Personally, I thought the, uh, the idea of having, you know, uh, faculty being involved in the teaching and learning center, I think it, it's a very, very powerful uh, thing and we really realized how, how powerful it is because then they can mentor each other you know the sideline uh, kind of unofficial support that happened is very very valuable and you can, i don't think you can do it with uh, simply having staff and people walking in um also it, it provided hands-on problems like you know even for me uh, someone who was not teaching so much as 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 the faculty fellows i you know i although i was engaged in many online education and i also teach from from time to time but not like these guys they are teaching like three courses here per year uh, they are really hands on they really know the problems they know more than us uh, and i would say if you bring an instructional designer or a staff member they wouldn't feel that so uh, i think um, Involving your faculty more, I think this is huge for online uh, centers. Of course, moving into the digital world is now the big move. I don't think there's a way back from COVID uh, after COVID-19. Uh, what, what happened in terms of online education is not going to be reversed. It's just going to move even forward and forward uh, as we move on. Uh, quality education, the kind of education is evolving very, very fast at this uh, stage. So uh, uh, the way uh, people are learning, they are learning how to learn <laughs> in yeah. a different way, if I want to say. So uh, even people who never learned online, who people who never met online, right now they discovered that, oh, it's a nice tool. Oh, we can do th things with that. Uh, so it's a transformative action that is not going to be, uh, th things are not going to be the same after COVID-19. This is for sure, and uh, I'm 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 pretty sure that uh, maybe this is one of the biggest for established I would say uh, centers of teaching and learning. This is their biggest uh, 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 transformation that they have to go through. Is now they are uh, they have a bigger crowd uh, demanding different things. Uh, also, as we're moving into online education, the quality is go going to become very very different, and technology is going to be racing very fast there. Uh, we can start to see that. We can start to see so many applications coming out to do, for example, mathematics, to, to visualize mathematics, to visualize physics. Um, I'm not sure about uh, English and uh, literature. Maybe Rula can talk about those. But I can see companies across the globe just racing to bring technology for that. I can see a lot of virtual reality. And then this, this sphere is going to be, uh, the competition is going to be very, very fierce. And uh, also, I can predict that uh, the top universities in the world are, are going to somehow start to dominate the, the scene. Because now, in online education, it's no more local. It's a global game. And uh, it's, it's going to ch the scenes are going to change very, very fast. So 
uh, universities overall have to strategize about that. The learning centers have to cope up with this, these new strategies.